lady who walks around without being shady who knows the values who's gone through trials her smiles are captured from mouth to mouth it's not the size of her thighs she worries about but the pride she thrives to keep that drive the cinnamon twist the cinnamon twist the cinnamon twist Hey, 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 it is your girl Tasha, known to the world as the Tasha Carpenter, but everybody calls me your girl Tasha because when you hanging with me, it's what? It's like you are hanging with your girl, and guess what? Today in the studio, guys, we got somebody hanging that a lot of you guys know, especially if you are in the DMV area, um, this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, comedian, playwright, and actor, you know, he was... I think his video came out, his um, commercial came out before I was born, but that's okay. <laughs> we have over here in the studio today, Mr. Howard G. Gaskins. What's up, what's up, what's up? Before you born, Tosh, really, really? <laughs> I think we about, I think I might be two years older than you, okay? All right, all right. I am right. not that old, thank you. Uh -huh, I am uh -huh. not that old, but but for real, I mean, when it came to you and your um, Senate commercial, how long has that commercial been out? I've been doing that commercial for 22 years, people. 22 years. I told y'all I'm only 21. We, we had this one. Okay, 22 <laughs> years. I'm only oh. 21. Well, hey, you go. Uh, I wouldn't say good looking 21, but <laughs> you must have been drinking. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. We're going to play like that. That's okay. That's okay. So, look, um, when it goes, goes to it, since we started talking about the kiss my bumper thing, right. how did that all happen? Well, I went, first I'm an actor and a comedian. I was a comedian first and an actor first. Uh, I went to, a, uh, I was on Def Jam. When Def Jam just came out, I had just uh, taped Def Jam. So I was up in New York. I was doing some comedy clubs up in New York with Tina Graham and uh, Bob Sumner. I was up there for about, mm, I said about a week. So the audition was on Thursday. My agent called me on Wednesday and said, you have to be in Baltimore Thursday for an audition. I still had shows up there. I was doing like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the whole week. I said, I said, I don't know if I can make it. I'm in New York. She said, you better get down there and get this audition. It's going to be worth your while. You better come. I said, all right. I said, I'll just come back down. So I drove all the way back down. They was doing the auditions. Uh, when I was there, um, a lot of local TV people were leaving out like uh, one of your, uh, like Donnie Simpson, he auditioned for it. Uh, Joe Claire auditioned for it. Uh, Tim Watts, a lot of people from radio stations and Randy Dennis auditioned for it back in Baltimore. A lot of people auditioned for this commercial. As they was leaving out and I saw the sign-in sheet, I was the last one. So I'm running the door sweating. <sighs> we were all, uh, I said, I'm here to audition. They were breaking the cameras down, Tasha. I mean, they was like, let's say this is it we're done for the night we're done this it's probably been from nine to five they was uh finished and next thing you know i ran in there breathing all hard and heavy and they said i'm sorry but this is over i said wait wait i drove <laughs> i drove all the way from new york and they said from new york for real and so they said okay since you came from new york so what they did, they thought I lived in New York and came all the way down just to audition. They didn't oh, know Lord. I was right there in Glen Burnie, Maryland, only 15 minutes from my house. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I go ahead, audition. I uh, had a good audition. They said, um, here's the slogan, tell other insurance company to, and I make up whatever I want. Mm -hmm. So I came up with the thing, kiss my bubble, just kiss it. And then the insurance company said, that's the first time I went to audition, and the people said, that's it. You're the one. That's the that's what we want. That's the that's the phrase. That's what about you got the part. And that's the history, baby. And you still a part of it. Twenty two years later. Twenty two years later. Lord have mercy. That's longer than my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. So tell me, how well, when did you it, it's funny to take a note, when did you first get into or realize that you was gonna be a comedian or who I mean, how did that all come about? Well, I got to give props to my... in the in school? No, I, 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 I was in school. I did to be... <laughs> I wasn't a class clown. I was the kid that always cracked on people. You know, I always cracked on people who, who got something, something smart to say. Cafeteria time, everybody want to sit with me because I'm cracking on everybody uh, that moves. Howard, I got to interrupt you. Yes. The people mm. are telling me 
that they want to hear you say kiss that they want you to do a lot of commercial mr lee smith all right what camera look at i guess it's lee smith or miss lee smith everybody sharing a bite sharing a bite sharing a bite kiss my papa just kiss it I made it famous, baby. I made it famous. <laughs> All right, there you go, guys. I got it right here on Hanging With Your Girl Just Tasha. kiss it, just kiss it. <laughs> oh, look, look, you just look good on that picture that just slide across the screen. Yeah. Oh, I have to see that thing again. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. All right, yeah. so back to being a class clown. Yeah, so I was a class clown. I was, um, I was, I was a class clown. I used to crack on people. I used to, um, I was a, um, a, a, a protector because I was real tall in school, so all the bullies would uh, not fear me, but they knew I wasn't one to joke with because I wasn't a bully. But so all the nerds used to like me and like being around me. And so they would sit under me in cafeteria time. So we eating lunch. Uh, little nerdy kids come sit at the table with me. And then you had your thugs and stuff. They would come by and they would pick with the little nerdy boys. I'd be like, no, nah, leave them alone. And then they were like, why? I said, because I said so. And then, you know, and next thing you know, we start jawing and cracking on each other. And next thing you know, people want to fight, but they ain't going to fight me because I was real, you know, I was a big guy in school. So You're I was, still a I, big guy. Yeah, and I would knock them out. So they ain't going to fight, nothing like that. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. But uh, so in school, I, 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 I just developed that theater. I developed entertainment. I fell in love with theater. I used to play sports. Basketball, football, until I fell in love with theater, and then I quit all my sports and just fell in love with theater. Then went in the military, got out of the military. What branch? Army. Oh, thank you, you know, for your right. service. That's right, that's right. Mm. And I met a guy named Ricky Shackleford, and uh, actually my sister, Sheila, Sheila Gaskin, shout out to my sister Sheila, she's on Facebook too. Hey, Sheila. She did introduced you invite her? Yeah, I, I did, I guess I did. <laughs> she, um, she actually introduced me to Ricky Shackleford because she met him and she was doing stand-up comedy first. And so when she met me to introduce me to Ricky Shackleford, he grew me, taught me things. At first, I started out being his video video guy. He videotaped all his shows and walked around with a camera and, and videotaped all his shows. And then one day I said, what is comedy but acting funny? So here I am, an actor. Why not act funny? in front of the camera instead of behind the camera. So I did my comedy debut uh, at Gatsby's Nightclub in the early 90s, in the 90s. i never forget it. I didn't bomb. I did really well. And uh, next thing you know, Apollo came. Uh, Def Jam came. Comic View came. Opened up for Patti LaBelle, Martin Lawrence, Dave Chappelle, Jamie Foxx. So you Tom really Miller. make money with us? But that's all I do for a living, is it? Oh, shucks. Yeah, so okay, a true entrepreneur. <laughs> yes, okay. yes. So does that mean I can borrow some money? Yeah, well, I cost a dollar. I cost a quarter on a dollar. So, you know, a quarter <laughs> I on a dollar. said borrow. You're right. trying to do the mob thing with me. <laughs> that's not the mob thing. It's business, baby. You, know, you, you got to keep it business. See, that's what they about learning. letting black people money, boy. If you don't know, you know, money, you got to keep it business. And then you got to sign some documents. He talking about he want to be a co-host and he can't even lend me some money. That's all right. That's all right. So so what do you, I mean, what what type of comedy creation style do you have? Are you a person? My audience is, my, my crowd is different. I do audience participation. I do celebrity impressions. I'm a more of an entertainer. So I'm more like a, a Vegas act because I do Vegas. I go to Vegas once a year. Mm-hmm. I perform out there. Um, for, uh, and I went overseas and performed for the troops in Kuwait, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia. Shout out to the troops over there, boy. It was, it was well worth it, man. Those guys, they deserve every, every bit of entertainment they get. And uh, it was an honor to serve them and go over there, man. I felt it when I was over there. Whew. And we went over there right after 9 11. I mean, wow. 9 11 happened, and then we went the following year. That's how it was like shaky ground over there. That's when we was over there performing for the troops. So. Yeah, so, um, yeah, my, 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 my comedy is a little different, especially my audience participation and uh, impressions, and then, of course, witty material. And I'm, I'm one of those spontaneous comedians. I, my ad lib was real so quick. You're, so you're in more of an impromptu yeah. guy than yeah. thinking about it in your head and just creating comedy. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So playwriting, acting, comedy. Which one is your true heart? Um... Right now, believe it or not, uh, writing and directing. I really like. I rather. I rather be behind the scenes now. I feel like. I feel like um, I'm Denzel. I did everything. So now I'm ready to get behind the scenes and I write stage plays and uh, sitcoms and 
TV shows, movies. I'd rather be behind. I'm a person behind the scene now. I like to direct and guide people and and help bring new talent, new faces up in the industry. Okay, all right. So you know what? I guess I should have did this. Says Mr. Lee. Any kind of questions you guys have? Hey, I say, oh, David's typing. Just kiss it too, guys. Y'all can <laughs> call kiss. in. You can actually call in and talk to Howard G. Ask him a question or whatever you want to do. Three zero one four two nine nine two four seven. Love it for you to call in. I don't want to have to be reading your. And I just realized I don't want to have to be reading your comments because if y'all notice, your girl Tasha glasses is not on, and I just realized my glasses is not on. Wow, so we built like that? You got you got a phone line? Where the phone at? Yes, that's the phone right there. Okay. Yeah, 301 429 Let him know that it really does ring, okay? Yeah, and that's a All government right. phone, so you know, be careful the minutes. Call in, call in, call in. I don't know how many minutes she got on that thing. Tasha only got a few minutes, so y'all better call it now. We'll take the first two calls. That's it. So we done after that. So look, what I want to do because they were talking about the kiss my bumper. Now he gave it to you impromptu. We want to um um cut to a quick commercial. It's only about thirty seconds. So those of you who are tuning in and you're not in the DMV area, you may not be familiar with um Howard G and yes. Grandma G. Grandma G, baby. Grandma yeah. G and Howard G. I want which to I've been about. doing way before Tyler Price. So y'all check my records, check my stats. I hate when people compare me to Medea. I mean, think about it. I've been doing that commercial for years. I've been doing my old lady character way before Tyler Perry. I got proof, okay? All so, right, so uh, let's go and check out How G, a.k.a. known as Mama Grandma G. Oh, y'all got my Grandma G clip? We got your Grandma G clip. Right okay. to the clip, control room. Thank you. Yeah, all right. For the real studio. Coverage, one week coverage. Coverage when the check for I'll call my grandma. Mrs. G, your grandson has a question. Grandma, Senate Insurance is known for... Child, don't be burning up my cell phone minutes. You know, Senate is known for same-day coverage, low-down payments, and low monthly payments. But and besides, at Senate, you can tell those other insurance companies to kiss my bumper. Just kiss it. And that's my final answer. Is this the name of whoever people name that you want to... There you go. Whew. Hanging with your girl Tasha, who do we have and where are you calling from? Andre Johnson, Captain <laughs> Heights, Maryland. Hey, Andre, what do you want to say to Mr. Howard G? What did you think about? Did you see that Senate commercial? Or are you familiar with the Kiss My Bumper Man? Yeah, I want to ask two questions. One, he said he was the class clown. Was that a defense mechanism? And two, when he does his comedy routine, does he do a lot of cussing or is it clean? I'm, I'm clean, ma'am. Um, and and no, it wasn't. It actually was a defense mechanism. You're right because um, kids used to tease me because I was dark skin, and I remember growing up and being real dark, and they used to call me, you know, uh, uh, Moco Chocolate, uh, uh, Kuta Kente, all these other names. I'm and, chocolate. I, I, I'm, I'm chocolate too. Right. So, and in other words, that was my defense mode. So, uh, I had to adapt and become like a tiger and attack when the kids would come at me and they used to come at me quite quite often and i was tall i was very tall in school i was i was the tallest kid in my class for all the way up to probably the 11th grade mm -hmm. 11 12th grade yes all right yep. well congratulations on your success thank you thank you very much i do a lot of churches man matter of fact i'm, I'm gonna be at temple hills maryland new life church in temple hills maryland on new year's eve I'll be in church. Yeah, I'll be forward at churches too. I'll just let you know. And if <laughs> she you like, she's gonna be yeah, in her church. <laughs> right. And, and if you if your church ever have one of the gospel comedy, please look me up. Okay. All right. Thank you for you calling nice in. Lady. You do have a blessing. Thank you. Okay, all right, guys. So that there you have it. Those of you who aren't here, somebody said they're from Florida, you see. Florida. Uh-huh. Right, we got people here. From um, Florida. Grandma G. Yeah. So how how does she come all about? Well, Grandma G started one day. I was in my own church, uh, way back in the day. It was called Garrison Boulevard, and I remember the church. And one day, I was sitting behind these two old ladies. They had been in their 80s, late, early 80s. And so, my sister was singing in choir, and both my sisters were in choir. My mother was on the usher board, and so I was just sitting there. 
And these two old ladies was so funny. I don't know if they knew I was behind them or not, but I could hear everything that was coming out their mouth. They remind me of the two old men from the Muppets. They wanted oh, to sit on the balcony. Mm -hmm. They cracked on. They even cracked on my own sisters and everything. Talking about how they couldn't sing. They just everything that went on in that church. They talk about. They like look at look at pastor. Look at look at pastor. Uh huh. I wonder where he come from. I mean everything that happened. They would talk about it. So I had tears in my eyes from laughing at them. And I thought I'm like hmm that is funny. The way they the mannerism, the way they act, the way they talk, and what they did. And I mean they were both that time it was impeccable. Both of them was like. Like, boom, boom, back and forth, back and forth. It was, you know, going back and forth. So I said, I'm going to think of an old lady character. I'm going to imitate them, how they act in church. So we had a, a talent show, or uh, like a talent show at my church. And so I did, um, I introduced Grandma G at the talent show 20-something years ago, 20, 24 years ago. And I did it at the talent show. And I told jokes during Grandma G, and it did really well. And she's been around since then. She's been around since then. David I, Richards is asking, Big G, what's your football team? Of course, I'm a Ravens fan, brother. I'm from Baltimore, so, you know, Ravens is my team. <laughs> uh, I know, shout out to D.C. Redskins, you know, and y'all Dallas Cowboys. I know the D.C. I had never seen more Dallas Cowboy fans in D.C. in my life. That is so crazy to me. That how you like a team that's way over west and you live here in D.C. They be telling me that that's D.C. stands for Dallas Cowboys. I know. It's so crazy to me. I'm like, I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, they're cool, but I'm a Ravens fan. You see my boy Lamar doing, and, you know, we, we win the games right now. You know, as long as we keep Flacco out for a little bit, let him get himself healed. And let us just win these games, baby. He Go said, ahead. hell yeah, the Ravens. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right, baby. Deuces. All right. Now, remember, you guys can call in 301-429-9247. So, um, is, is, is Grandma here? Grandma ain't here, baby, but I can be Grandma. It's just like that. It's just, just how they talk, you know, how you know how it is. Just getting Having uh, some okra and spinach and and just got finished um, using the restroom. Woo, Lord, baby got gas. You know, oh, Lord. People, one thing about old people, they, they, they be honest. They don't hold nothing back. You know, they'll tell you about how they feel. Baby, you know what? Your hair is nappy. I, I think you need to you need to go get a haircut or, or do something to it. And they be talking to women like that, you know. So, so they don't, they don't care. They be like, they ruthless, boy. Old ladies are ruthless. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Okay, so look, what you got coming up? Oh, man, I got a lot coming up. Dang, I'm going to kick off the show already. You got me plugging my stuff. No, I clear. Well, uh, I, mean, right I, mean, now, I just well, want to know. You got my stuff. I'm plugging my stuff. I ain't finna talk about my career. You got well, me, talk about your career. Go ahead. About, you know, it's your show. I'm you trying, you, you didn't ask me how did I get started in acting, how I get started in, in playwriting. And, I asked uh, you what was your passion. You said your passion is playwriting, right? Okay, right, how right. did you get started? Okay, okay. Don't see, I'm, I'm going to get your questions from uh, you anyway. All right. right? I, I, no, no, he, no, like, no. See, see, he is sensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I mean, I'm I ain't sensitive. used to no dark skin. I'm, I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> you're not light skin. Light skin people are supposed to be sensitive. You dark skin. You're not supposed I'm, to be sensitive. I'm like, I'm like uh, 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 Erica Badu. I'm sensitive about my. And, uh, what camera we at? Y'all keep switching cameras. <laughs> Don't worry about the camera. Uh, just the follow the camera. It's like, boom, boom, boom. Playing tennis up here. Boom, boom, boom. Where y'all at now? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> like I said, um, so acting. Uh, I was in theater in high school. Fell in love with acting. My drama teacher, Miss Cheryl Pastor, who I love and taught me so much. Uh, I won't, And I never had her as a class. I, I just had her as a, uh, a after school type of thing you know school? Walbrook High School okay and so we I didn't take drama as a class I took it like an after school activity program and that's when I learned a lot from her and uh, I never forget she cast me in a play called Guys and Dolls and I played Sky Madison the, the leading role she gave me the book it had it been about 60 page book with a, a, he was a main character I had a probably about 50 lines in it, right? She gave me the book on Wednesday. I went home, learned all my lines. So on Thursday, I knew my whole lines for the whole book by heart. That's how excited I was when I got the part. Uh -oh, okay, she, okay. she was like, she was impressed. She said, you know your lines? I said, 
she told us we had to act out a scene. She said, all right, go back to the scene. We act the scene out. I said, she said, well, here, take your book. I said, I don't need it. She said, you know your lines? I said, yeah. You know your lines through the whole play? I said, yeah. You learned your lines in one night. I just gave it to you yesterday. You learned your lines? And I said, yep. And I learned in my lines the whole play, a 60-something page book like that. That's how excited I was when I got the part. So that's something, you know, amazing. So acting from now, that's when you just started. Yeah, just... started acting and got in theater and I quit the football team. The fellas was mad at me. Uh, How did that transition to writing? I mean, what do you... That came later. Like, the writing came when um, I was... Uh, I was... Uh, used to be on radio. I do, used to do morning show. And, okay. yeah, I used to be on morning show. Um, 90Q, morning show. And so um, I used to listen to Tom Joyner, soap opera. I used to do the soap opera years ago mm -hmm. on Tom Joyner. So I decided to write a soap opera for a Baltimore radio station in Baltimore. It was called As Cherry Hill Turns. So I started writing and uh, producing. Meanwhile, while I'm doing that, I'm teaching at Department of Rex and Parks. Uh, shout out to Angie Morrison. I'm teaching um, theater at the school for kids. And so I would write little scenes and write little plays and stuff. And then we would have the kids act out in my plays. Okay. So uh, I wrote my play. Uh, I wrote the soap opera as Charlie Hill Turns. And as Charlie Hill Turns got really popular and people used to tune in on 90 Q every Friday morning and listen to it. So I would talk to a good friend of mine uh, named Chrissy. I got to make sure I give Chrissy her shout out. Chrissy said, why don't you take the soap opera and make it into a play and she wanted to plant the seed i said you know what you're right that's a good idea why don't i do that so i turned the radio soap opera into a stage play as charlie hill turns was my first stage play it was a huge success we did it in baltimore probably about 40 times every time we did it, we sold out uh so dvd i still got the dvd of it now and a lot of people that was in that play have gone on and then bigger things like the lady who, I was going to ask you that question. Yeah, the girl Gabrielle, from she's from Maryland, who played in the Bobby Brown story mm -hmm. and played uh, Bobby Brown, Whitney, played Whitney. Her okay. name Gabrielle Dennis. Okay. She's in my play. I sent you the clip. Remember the clip? That was All her. Right, that's her. Yeah, and then Kwame Patterson, he's been in uh, a lot of shows. Ray Donovan, he's in a new show called, called um, uh, uh, The Unit and some other stuff. He's in 50 Cent uh, stream show. He's doing a lot of stuff. He's in L.A. Uh, Mark Clark, who uh, who's married to Allison from Fox 45. Okay. You ready? Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's his his her husband was in my play. He was he started with me. Um, uh, Larry Lancaster, comedian, well-known comedian. He's in um, BT. A lot of people. I feel like Spike Lee because that play launched everybody's career. And everybody just blossomed and took off and gone the type of ways. That was my first play. And then I meet you. Right. It, because you were in the race play, the ties that bind. Bonds, right? At which I directed a play that Lorraine was in last year, and so well, Lorraine asked me to be in her play this year, and so I wrote a play called Mass Monster under the direction of um, um, that I forgot her name. My mind went blank. Uh, the Mass Monster, Ooh. and uh, under the I, direction of a uh, co-write, I co-wrote co it with her. And we, we wrote it together, and it was a comedy, musical, stage play. We cast LeRae, and me and Ray came good friends, and then I was in that play. Unfortunately, I can't do LeRae's up-and-coming performance. She got a new performance coming up. Shout out to LeRae. Um, uh, February 9th, uh, go see her play. It's called, um, her play is called... The Ties of the Binds. The Ties of Binds, right. <laughs> and go to her page, uh, naturally... Beautiful is her page. Go to her page and you can see uh, the things she got going on. And it was uh, a really, really, really good play. Right. And you I played know. a character that I've normally never played before. That was kind of creepy. I was a creepy guy. I was a, ugh, I hate to say it. Can a I say? real creep. You can say he was a real creepy guy. He was, yeah, he was a pedophile. And he was, um, he was, he was an uncle, a relative. And he was doing stuff to his niece. And... And her father, the girl who played the act opposite of me, her father said every time we would do this scene, I was so good at it, he had to leave the room because I, I, I looked creepy. For, I was so uh, so I'm a method actor. I'm one of those guys. I really be in my character. I, I really 
take it on. Not saying I did that before, but I'm just saying, you know, I really yeah, study study the part, you know. So I'm like Denzel, baby. I I I I go to my parts and I, mm, I grasp them and I I'm true to my game. I'm true to this acting thing. I'm really true to it. And so uh, and my baby girl was supposed to be, be able to be in the play, but Larray, when it was scheduled, it was at, scheduled after Trinity had to go to Oklahoma because she actually wanted Trinity to do the part that her daughter did. Really? So, yeah, that's what she wanted. Wow, that would have been something. Yeah, and but you have been interviewing a guy that. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. I, I, I might not have liked you too much when to be on the show right now because he was crazy in me. Okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> it was so comedic, but it was still a creepy, creepy guy. And uh, that's wild. So you're doing that? She does. She okay, acts good. and she sings too. Look, okay, so what's funny is she's over, she's all the way in Oklahoma, at Oklahoma Christian. End up over there. So you going to think that I was asking this question, I guess because you were talking about writing the um, soap operas and Sicko, how you right. end up doing the play. Somebody says, have, um, Ed Jones is asking, have you ever thought about producing a sitcom and why not do it here on WBGR? I, I would produce a sitcom. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, I'm, I have a son. Uh, my, my son is in California, and he's a comic also. And we got a DVD out. That's the DVD you, you got a clip of. It's, it's called um, In the Jeans. And my son is a comedian. I'm a comedian. And I, I want to write the sitcom based off our life where we both live in an apartment and we both trying to get through New York. And should I put this out there? Because I might speak, might steal my idea. I don't know. Oh, if I yeah. Tell, mm. I don't know if I should tell a story. Oh, no. Mm, no. Yeah, Just I don't think I'm going to tell it right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to tell this rest of this because there's some people out there. I'm a union vice myself. president. And yeah. And, and it's not copyright. Yes yet. or no. Yeah, yeah. Yes I, yeah, no. yeah, you're right. You're right. Don't Thanks, be giving Tasha. too much information. I don't give too much. Yeah, that. I got a good sitcom <laughs> idea with me and my son for me and my son only. <laughs> And uh, I just thought about it. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold up. I'm going to put this out there. And then somebody writes, hey, that's a good idea. Hey, right there. And the next thing you know, they're in New York and they in L.A. And the next thing you know, we, it'll be changed. And we, oh, I would be so hot. I would be you mad. Said, no, uh -uh. I would say, that dang old Tasha, she set me up. No, that was Ed Jones. <laughs> he asked you the question. That was Ed Jones. Yeah, to answer your question, Ed, yes, I do have an idea for a show. And I'm working on some stuff right Here now. Here on WBGR. Yeah, if, if the money's right. <laughs> yeah, you know. Rather don't do no stuff for free. Yeah, no. Uh, we got a got a plug where you talking about your you couldn't remember the lady's name. We have a product called Brain. Uh -huh. Um, that helps you to reboot your <laughs> CPU, right? So, guys, actually, he already has the T, and he just hasn't used it yet. Yeah, but. I'm waiting for after the holidays. Okay, I want to get through all this, you know. Uh, cranberry sauce and stuffing and all that stuff for the Thanksgiving and Christmas because it's just me starting that and then you know so I'm going to wait first of the year yeah see see the tea we're trying to clean them out clean them out we're baby. trying to clean them out but we got clean that brain out. too so you got somebody Latoya Adam says Walbrook in the house that's right that's my old uh, my, my school in the house our model it's what what's up Walbrook hold on I can't do my W's Walbrook <laughs> is, that, is that a W <laughs> Walbrook I don't even know Walbrook. Now, we got a question. Um, David right. is asking, are you friends with Jess Hilarious? And if so, would you be interested in working with her? Sure, I would love to work with Jess Hilarious. I don't, um, I never met Jess Hilarious personally, but funny thing, my daughter, who was on The Wire, uh, if y'all remember The Wire, HBO The Wire, remember the kids scene, my daughter played Zenobia and the classroom scene, she was the one that got slapped. Her name is Taylor. And uh, she's on Facebook as well, uh, Lesson Learned. And that's that's her Facebook name. Her and Jess Elias was in school together, and they went to class together. They actually showed me a picture. I can show you the pictures on my wow, phone. Wow. Okay. And her and Jess Elias was like, you know, it was cool and stuff like that. And she said she was surprised that Jess Elias became a comedian because she remembered her from school and how they were back then. And because my daughter's the wild, crazy one, and 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 all the change, the one you would you would think was do stand up comedy since her father do, does it, and but she's chose acting as well. But she wanted to do she wanted to do comedy, so eventually we're gonna get her on stage. She eventually gonna get on stage, and soon she's you know she got she got two boys now, and she's trying to settle down, and I'm gonna get her on stage. And I got a niece who's doing very well in stand up comedy now too, Nakia out of Seattle. I just talked to her yesterday. She's doing very well in stand up comedy. So that just runs in the family. Is this in the blood? It's it's something. It's something. Uh, my son did it. Uh, my my niece. Um, 
my my oldest son tried to do it. My other son tried to do it, but he bombed out. So he just want to keep it. You know. And then my youngest son is into acting, so he's also a basketball star. Matter of fact, he got a basketball game right now, and I'm missing because I want to be on your show, Natasha. And I never what position they play? He's a center, and I, right. and, and he's a star. Like he's like one of the number one scorers in the okay. team. And I'm missing this game. He playing a team from D.C. with the oh, arts. Oh, yeah, I'm in D.C. I doing a radio you. show while he's in Baltimore playing a D.C. game with a D.C. team. Uh, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh. But hey. Shout out to your son. That's right. Justin, kick butt, son. Kick butt. <laughs> now, look. You made a couple of my questions that I was thinking about came up and the things that you just said. But right now, instead, I want everybody to see how you are stand up. So we're going to go ahead and cut to a video to show you doing some of your stuff. All right, that's cool. And see what the people think, guys. So we'll see you on the flip side of the video. On the flip side, shout it. Wife's in the bedroom watching TV. The front door busts open. I hear people run upstairs. I hear door being knocked down. I hear pressure being moved. I hear screams. I hear shots being fired, right? Now, am I wrong because I locked that bathroom door? <laughs> okay, now somebody had to raise the key, right? Speed the kids, man. You know, you ever, you ever had, you ever had, uh, had those bad kids in your, in your family or in your, in your life that you got to deal with? You know, I, I was dating this girl. She had a son named Tavon. Tavon, bad as hell, y'all. Tavon just turned six, right? So he just turned six. He happy as hell. He's six, right? So I told Tavon, I said, "Look, little man, I'm gonna drop you off over your aunt house, right? Now we are gonna get on this bus. Your car broke again. Look, don't worry about that." Will catch this bus. Now you tell the bus driver you five so you can ride for free. <laughs> but I'm six. Look, you tell me five, boy. We get on the bus. As soon as we get on the bus, bus driver will start talking. Hey, little man, how you doing? I'm all right. What's your name? Tavon. Hold on, you Tavon. Five. When you gonna turn six? As soon as I get on this damn bus. <laughs> stalking you, you know he's stalking. He'll sit outside your house for hours, days, parked in his IROC Z, smoking a cigarette, right? Watching your every move in your apartment. And then they, then they call you up on that untraceable cell phone. Hello? So what brothers do? We show up at the job unannounced. Then the police show up. That's some bullshit, Keisha. <laughs> How are you, uh, son? Awesome. <laughs> How are you and Mike Bond? They were funny as hell. We really enjoyed the show. It was awesome. All right, all right. All right, guys, we are back. What yes. did y'all think about that? Tavon? The old Tavon. That was just hilarious. Yeah. I think that was my favorite. I was sitting up here looking at the video <laughs> yesterday, guys. If you go to, um, it was on Facebook. There's a, it's a whole nine minute um, version of him doing the stand up. But Tavon, and I tell him the child that, you know, say that you what, five years old, so you can go to the bus for free. Right. Now, how did, now, when you do your comedy, is it based off of real life experiences? Some stuff based on real stuff. Like, I really thought about if some robbers come in the house, what would I do? And so, 
<laughs> it's like so I, uh, some of it, 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 it's real stuff. Some stuff I imagine imagine what will happen. Uh, even when I do my impressions, I do stuff imaginative. What if a celebrity would do this way? A celebrity do that way? Um, and then some stuff is uh, real stuff. Some stuff is I make believe. I make it up, and I just go with the flow. So is Tavon real? Because I like Tavon. He's not real, but he he he's somebody out somebody there. Somebody out there. Some kids act like that. I can tell. I can imagine. Trust me. So when you was talking about um, the young lady that your daughter was in a class with her, Jess Hilarious, Je- right? Jess the one that's on um, uh, uh, Little Ralph show. She's on a Little Ralph show on Sundays, and she's a real popular comedian now. And she started out off of Instagram and Facebook, off of videos. Okay, so she didn't act like that when she was younger. She, yeah, when my daughter told me, she wasn't as uh, vocal. She okay. was. She so that's as, my question for right. you. How much of your on stage is like your off stage? I'm opposite. Um, people tell me that I'm more quiet, or quiet, ter- you know, I'm more subtle when they're around me. And then when I'm on stage, like I'll switch, you turn it on, and boom, I'm, I'm more vibrant and stuff on stage. Cause like, if people don't believe I'm a comedian when they meet me. They just think I'm a, a just okay. a, a nice guy, and then when I turn the mic on and start talking and you know stuff flowing, it's like totally different. It's like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. So then, I mean, because I heard a thing that usually when it comes to comedians, they're like withdrawn and calm, and they're not like that on stage. Like, some of them. Some of them. I'm 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 in between because I'm I'm just not as funny as I am when I'm on stage. Okay. So I, I'm a little laid back, but I do can turn it on and turn it up. Shout it. Now let me see. Do you remember that you tried to rip me off? What? Years ago. At the play. Well, you ain't had uh, exact At the change. Play. Now, I, I, look. Uh-huh. Stopped him in the hall. He was selling his DVD. Right. Gave me one price. I think you might have said two for 20. Had to go get some change. Came back and it was like one for five hundred when he came back. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> but, but you went up on the price. It's like now hold up, wait a minute. That is not what you said a few minutes ago. So why are you trying now, to DVDs see me? DVDs normally sell fifteen two for twenty. So I do fifteen two for twenty, and I think what it was, you were trying to just get one. Well, if you want to get no, one, no, I wasn't. If you just get one, I, I was buying more than one for you, but you changed the price when you came back out. I don't. I don't, I don't recall. Am I on court? This David Richards, your mm-hmm. wife was there. She was a witness to the I, whole I, thing. I don't recall. Can I take the fifth? No, you can't. My lawyer, can I have my lawyer present? So if they want to get a DVD, what do they need to do? Uh, you hit me on Instagram, at Comedian Howard G. Hit me up on Facebook, Howard G. Gaskins. Or you can always uh, text me. I'm, I'll get my number out. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't ducking for nobody unless you're a bill collector. And then I know who you are because I got the little scam thing on my uh, call ID. So if you're a bill collector, I'm already going to know when you call, baby. I already see that one eight 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 number. I know who you are. You know, the little 800 numbers just call you randomly. They you know call you from real one numbers now. Oh, they can call for your local number now. They can get your local <laughs> 240 410. They can get your local number and call from you and then act like they somebody you know. They show up Hello? everything. Yeah, it's how would you that? Yeah, what's up, man? This is um, this Mike. Mike from who? Uh, Mike from Horizon. When you gonna pay that bill? Hey, Slim, hold up, man. How you, yo? So they they think they, they slick now. Do you know where I work at? For Horizon. Uh-huh. 28 years. Get out of here. <laughs> 28 years. This one, the one over there. Um, Chesapeake Complex on Columbia Pike, and I'm over top of the people that call to harass. Uh, as a vice president, I represent the people that call to harass you about your bill. All right. Okay. Hey, so you got a nice little government job, Shawnee. 28 Shari. years. You got, some, no you got nice little job. coins up ahead. You That's got some little right. coins up ahead. Tim Watts says, What's up, G? Yeah, Tim Watts on there. Tim Watson. Hey, that's, that's from Matt. Just tell what's up, Tim. That's Tim from V13 back in the day. Tim, come on and call in. 301 429 Oh, you don't want Tim to call in. Tim is hilarious. Tim, call in. 301 429 9247. It's don't, right on the screen. Don't call in, in the Tim. Comments. Come on, call in, Tim. It, this is my time, come Tim. On, Tim, Tim. 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 take my show. <laughs> this, is my, this is my hour, Tim. Let me get look, mine, look. please. When it comes, okay, so let's see. Who, which. Play writer, because you talked about don't be con- um, comparing you to no Tyler Perry. Exactly. You don't like that. But when it comes Just to... Don't, I don't like to being compared 
far as the character of Grandma G and Medea. I don't like they 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 totally opposite and they 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 both men dressed as an old lady, but still they they is different. So I just don't want people to say I'm copying off of him and things of that nature. When okay. I, I I I've been doing it way longer than him, but hey. Okay, so in that thought process, yes. when it comes to writing plays, who is it that you think that your style is most like, or who inspired you in the playwriting? And the same thing when it comes to your comedy, and the same thing when it comes to your acting. Well, for our plays, uh, I was inspired by quite a few people. David Talbot, of course, um, who's a Maryland native. Well, he's not a Maryland native. He he went to school at Morgan. And I auditioned for him, too. Shout out to David Talbert. Um, I remember years ago, I was supposed to be in one of his plays. Uh, he auditioned me. Uh, David Talbert, uh, of course, Tyler Perry, one of my mentors and idols. Um, Have you met uh, him in person? I met him years ago when I was working at the radio station. And we actually took a picture together. And I don't know where that picture is. I can't find it. I didn't know he was that much taller than me. I'm 6'3". Tyler Perry is about 6'4", 6'5". And... Um, and then also two uh, local playwrights from my hometown, uh, Pastor Sherry Grant. Shout out to her. Hope she's watching. Um, she was a real instrument, in, instrumental uh, 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 a person that um, I admire. Uh, taught me a lot in theater from watching her plays. My own sister, of course, Sheila Gaskins. Ursula Battle, who inspired me as well. She's another playwright and uh, a phenomenal woman who writes plays. And shout out to Ursula as well. So that's far as that's as far as theater. And all my plays are totally different. Like their storylines different. The the, the 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 concept is different. Everything is totally different. Um, are your plays? Do they all have a purpose? Yeah, they all have spiritual uh, backgrounds. Most of them, like eighty-five percent of them, do. Now. I'm at the point now where people are, are reaching out to me and want me to turn that book or turn their life into a stage oh, play. Yeah. Like I did Man Monster. That wasn't that was that dealt with um uh, uh spousal abuse and uh things of that nature, which I don't know nothing about that, but young lady called and said, You sure you want me to help you with this play? Because I'm a comedian, I'm gonna make it still funny, even though there's nothing funny about a husband beating on his wife, but right. I'm still going to put some stuff in there. And she says, yeah. So she trusts me. And so, hey, um, hey, it worked out pretty good. So, uh, you know, uh, as far as staging and, and playwright, that goes now as far as acting, of course, Denzel, um, Robert De Niro. I'm going to throw something, man. Say hello to my little friend, you know. Look at her, man. Look at her. She can't even hold kids, you know. You know, I'm trying to talk about I want to meet Denzel. Denzel, all right, all right. I will have you playing basketball in Pelican Bay. Shoe program. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. No, see, I hit him, I hit him with some Denzel, baby. Uh, <laughs> Denzel was one of my powerful actors that I love. Rob De Niro. Uh, and I love Viola Davis. Woo! That woman is a beast in acting. Her acting skills, when she was in Antoine Fisher, I knew she was a beast. All right, now. I still remember her seeing Antoine Fisher. I get chills when she played his mother. You remember that? Yeah. And when she was in the kitchen, and he was talking to her, and she just burst out crying, and shoot, that woman is a beast. So, uh, Viola Davis, uh, Whoopi, of course. And, and I like, I, it was funny, and even with Whoopi and myself, Boss being comedians, we always get cast in serious roles. Like, I always play a pastor. I play a, um, a, a, a police commissioner. I play a father, a security officer. I never get cast as a comedian. As a comedian. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is about that. We always get cast as uh, a serious role. Never get. I never get a part as a, a, a comedic role. Never. I don't know why that is, but it, that's the way it is. Now, as far as comedy... Um, people inspired me as far as comedy, of course. Number one, uh, my mentor, Ricky Shackleford. He was watching. I don't know if he's still watching. Ricky Shackleford, he uh, inspired me. Uh, great mentor. My sister, Sheila Gaskins. Um, 
who else? And as far as celebrity comedians, Martin Lawrence. I gotta say, Martin okay. Lawrence. I like Martin because he does characters, and I, I always loved his characters. I love Otis. I love Kung Fu uh, Jones. What's his name? Kung Fu Jones, the guy that did the karate. And uh, I like these guys at DC. Shout out to those guys at DC that, that do a good impression of all the Martin characters, and they doing parties and stuff now. You ever see these guys? They, they, the, um, you talking about, um... They do Otis, they do yeah. the white guy, they do... You talk about the, uh... What is their name? I don't know their It's like two of them. They go all okay. around the city and do the parties because and stuff now. actually... The, um, one you said that was a guess. One should... of my, I could, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. one of them, they they come to, they hang with my, one of my girlfriend's Tanya all the time. Right. Matter of fact, um... They were having a, a concert for Christmas, and we were at it. And the young man, David Richards, has been asked you questions. Right. One of them spilled a whole drink on his wife while we was at this concert. Right. Yeah, yeah. But they just crazy. They are um, crazy, and they got those concerts down packed. I mean, they, do. they even short and built like Martin. And they, man, he do Jerome. Oh, my. I have tears in my eyes. He do Jerome real good. And when so he wedding do, crash, crash. So they wedding crash? Yeah, they wedding crash. Yeah, yeah. that's um, those guys are liars. And uh -huh. sister, sister last week, one of them got up and did pole dancing on a pole. You should see the video. <laughs> he on the pole swinging around. Doing who? Jerome or doing who? He was just doing the pole, doing the stuff, dressed yeah. up like that. And they was, like, cracking up about him being on the pole, pole dancing. Yeah, I love those the guys. Party crashes. Party that's crashes. Like, yeah, that's party it. crashes. Thank you. Yeah, Thank party you. crashes. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, those guys. I love those guys, man. I, I, I swear, if I ever do something, I'm going to hire those guys. <laughs> they, they are hilarious. I love them. I like when they... Um, when they, uh, I was doing something and uh, I was watching some video and they was on the streets down southeast just doing stuff out of the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had tears in my eyes because it's like they are crazy. I don't want to have Mark never met them or saw them before because I know Mark would give a tribute to those guys or at least had he should have them come on. If they reboot Martin's show, he should have those guys come on because they are very good, both of them. I, 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 I've never seen that before and I thought they did a great job doing that. All right. So Martin, so which one, which one most influenced you? You said the, the three ones, but who do you? Um, the, probably my mentor, Ricky Shackleford, my partner. He and I still partners been together for almost 27, 28 years now. Okay. Doing comedy producer show. We got a show this coming Saturday at Vulcan Blazers uh, in Baltimore. So if y'all want to do something this Saturday, Christmas party, um, I'm hosting, Ricky Shackleford hosting. Um, also, too, this Saturday from 5 to 9, I'm going to be doing the Toys for Tots. Uh, comedy show case, um, and that's gonna be myself. Um, what's the other comedian name? Uh, uh, white guy, real funny white guy named Sonny Fuller, and of course, the queen of comedy, um, Miss uh, Sylvia Traymore. She's gonna be there. Oh, it's all clean, they're gonna be giving away toys and stuff. That's this Saturday. Uh, you go to my page and see the see the flyer. Um, also, too, I got I think I got the page as well. I got the flyer as well. So if y'all not busy, come on out this coming Saturday. Here it is, right here. It's gonna be a toy drive comedy show. Um, it's gonna be at one three five six Oakey Street, North East Washington D.C. two zero zero two. Ivy City Smokehouse. We're going to make sure we get that in the comments. After yep. the show is done, we're going to drop Early it in the show. comments. 5 o'clock, y'all. 5 o'clock. Remember, you can go to his um, Facebook page. Yep. I won't be there because I'm going to see Life Jennings. Oh, excuse me. He's in town this nice. weekend. And hey, life. That is part of my my, my birthday life. Monday, so I'm going life to see Life James Saturday. Yes. Yes. Pardon me. Do you yes. have the Grey Poupon? Mm -hmm. yes. Excuse life me. Jennings. Life Jennings. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. So, okay, <laughs> let's take into account all the experiences you've had in your career. Okay. What, if anything, would you do differently? Um, probably uh, would have focused more on one thing at, at a time where I'm jumping all over the place. Cause I, but I'm so multi-talented and multitasking, not to, you know, brag about myself. But if I had focused more on my writing and directing, but then again, I can't say that because one thing leads to the other. So I didn't know I could write and direct until I did comedy. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know I could do comedy until I met certain people and I used to videotape comedy shows. 
I didn't, oh, did I tell you I used to be a DJ? I used to be a DJ, too. I used to, I used to be a DJ as well before I was doing stand-up comedy. So I used to be a, a, a well-known DJ at clubs and stuff like that. And then, you know, crossed over into comedy. Uh, when I was at the Gatsby Nightclub, where I first started comedy, I would do comedy upstairs and then go downstairs and DJ. <laughs> right wow. after I perform. So, uh, and that, that, was, that was, like, crazy. So, um... I just only thing I wish I would do more. I wish I um, probably wrote more. Probably, uh, I hate to say, it, I probably should have went to L.A. and left and went to L.A. But if I left L.A., I probably would have never got kissed my bumper. I wouldn't have got, but I might have been more famous now. Think about it. I probably would have been had my own sitcom and movies. So, so is but that, you guys would never met me as Kiss My Bumper. Wow, oh, wow. So that's. A, so Melissa Hackney says that gifts are making room for you. Yes, it is. Glory to the God. It all come from upstairs, baby. I, I don't do it by myself. So um, how they say he will he will make gifts he will make uh, gifts and room for your gifts. So I'm just doing what he told me to do. That's probably why I guess a lot of my stage plays are starting to be more spiritual because I'm I'm listening, obeying to him, and. Uh, Oh, I don't want to make this a, a spiritual show. You're going to make it a spiritual hey, look, we, show. You're going to make it a spiritual show. We got, we got two sponsors, don't we? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> you can make it whatever you want. And you guys get to dial in on Instagram, too. You guys get to dial in. Three Are we on Instagram now, too? Yo, shout out to my Instagram seven. people. Yo, what's up, son? <laughs> I ain't know he's on Instagram. I just turned it on, so I was like, hey. Yo, son, too. I need to get on Instagram, too. That's right. We look. I don't need no tripod. He came on here talking about where's the tripod to put the phone up. You better put it on that water bottle like I just did mine. Go ahead and get on Instagram. Get on. Get on. Hey, whatever. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> so, shoot. Now, you like, you were doing your own parking planning and doing the kids and everything, and the fact that you've had people that did your plays and they have bigger. Um, Got on and did bigger, better things, yes. Yes, and you've been like that vehicle for those people. You right. know, that's great. You're giving back to the community. Exactly. For there is somebody out there that, oh, well, let me go back to what you were talking about. Even though you multitask and you do a whole, a whole lot of things, do you feel that you had a first master one before you moved to the next? Yes, and yes. Yes, you got to master it. Um, um, my playwriting has definitely gotten better because my first play. It was long. It was like three hours long. And that's too long for a play. And uh, shout out to my mentor and playwright as well. Do your Lem- plays start on time? I try to. I try to have start on right. time. Sometimes I wait for I don't like no late play. But I hate long plays. <laughs> I learned a lot from my mentor, poet, Lamar Hill. Shout out to Lamar. Good friend of mine. One of my, my good friends. He um, told me, you know, no play should be longer than two hours. No play. And my plays used to be... Two hour, 45 minutes, two hour, 50 minutes. I said, no, I got to cut it back. So I started cutting my plays down and cutting them down a lot. Hey, T. Cole. Who's T. Cole? He's from Chicago checking in saying hello. Who's Instagram? Uh-huh. Deuces, answer. son. What's up? Hit me up. Comedian at Comedian Howard G, baby. That's right. Howard G in the house. In the building, he'll, he'll baby. Chicago, too. <laughs> so, okay, so... Jumping around, I went there. But going back to a person who is looking to get into any of the fields that you're in. What advice? If I give to what them? advice would you give to them? Um, It's so much stuff now. It's so much social media. So much ways they can learn and do stuff. Um, first of all, make sure you, you true to yourself and what you want to do. And study that one thing grasp hold of it and study it firmly as the um, writer or as the comedian, as the actor. Master that first before you move on to the next thing. Um, myself, I, I, I just was, my mind was doing this, doing that, doing that, going all over the place. So I, I was like, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I felt like I didn't have enough time to do everything. So uh, study, Get under somebody, read some books. That's what my sister always tell me. You need to read a book. I'm not a, a book reader. I'm not a real, I like read books. I, I learn faster watching. So if I can learn stuff on YouTube, I'll learn it faster. Or study on my sister. My sister can show me something one time and I will learn it and memorize it and stuff like that. And things she had taught me, she had went to school for it. She has a degree in it and she she mastered in it and stuff like that. And she would always say, you need to read. And I don't read. But once she tell it to me, 
It's right here, Sheila. See that? I still remember. It's right there, Shadi. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. Oh, you got somebody from Columbia, not District of Columbia. Columbia saying hello, Mr. Columbia, Boss. South Carolina. No. Columbia. Of Columbia. Get out of here. What do you say? He say hi. Hey, what's up, Columbia? What's <laughs> going on? Boss is checking in. Columbia, like the like, cocaine, Columbia. How you doing? Yeah. Let me tell you something, man. You know, it's Tony Montana, man. You know me, huh? You know me? I need my shipment, man. Get my shipment, okay? Or else, you know. Say hello to my little friend. Oh, shucks. All right. There you go, Columbia. He represented Columbia, for you. baby. <laughs> well, hello. Sorry, so, Madonna. You know? So, we sitting up here. Anything that you want to put out just to the audience? Let me just say, this is just Bill Cosby. Oh, Lord. And I just want to say. What do you think about that? I gave my girl Tasha a drink. She drank it. So in a few hours, it's about to get popped. That was just <laughs> Somebody, I just heard the other day, somebody was like, they were talking about, I don't know if it was, they was wondering, where did all this time, people have been wondering, when you go to the club, and back in the day, you rolled up in the club, and all of a sudden, they were selling jello shooters. Right. Where did the jello shooters come from? And, then and they someone was like, they <laughs> It's like Bill Cosby. And someone had Spanish fly in them. But, um, <laughs> and for kids who don't know what Spanish fly is, look it up. Okay. But, uh, far as that concerned, oh, man, I am, I am, yeah, I am not surprised. I'm just, I'm ashamed, surprised, a little upset, and. I, I really don't think he should have went to jail at that age. I think he should have paid some restitution and, you know, paid some, some kicked, kicked out some money. But at 80-something years old, to lock you up, come on, really. And then you got Harvey Weinstein just floating around, picking up his next chick, and he's in some hotel on Cabo somewhere. I don't think that's fair. So, and me personally. Okay. And, then I, and I like the fact that Bill... Would do a lot of judgment on other comics and stuff like that. How are you gonna judge Eddie Murphy and all these other guys? And you you just as bad and worse. So, you know what? The, I hate I hate shame calling. I hate comics that do that. All right, all right. So all right, that's my piece on the Bill Cosby thing. And we only got a couple of minutes. I won't even start to talk about. Is is there any topics that you personally have that's off limits that you know that you just will not touch when it comes to your comedy? Pretty much, no. It's nothing. Uh, no, because there's nothing out there that. Um, now I do feel like sometimes comedians and, and entertainers need to have time with their family and, 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 and chill and have their own time with their family and stuff, especially if it's if it's a incident where they lost a loved one and they need to, you know, grieve and stuff like that. I feel like that should be available for entertainers and stuff like that. Like if I was going through a grieving period or if I'm going through a thing where I'm trying to get off of drugs or, you know, stuff like that, then mm. of course that's I think everybody should take a break and chill on that. But besides that um, people don't know, but when you sign on to this, you sign on to this, so you're an open book, and this, this is the lifestyle you choose. That's why a lot of celebrities, you know, start getting mad at paparazzi. I wish paparazzi would come around my house and, and pitch, pitch me in. You talking awesome. about the $5 jewelry? No, not that one. <laughs> that, no. Okay, Tasha, let, let me tell a joke, okay? Yeah, the $5 jewelry. Yeah, right. <laughs> Look, what we're going to have to do is have you come back for us to do, to do like... I guess hot topics is just talk about different things like a rapid fire. Or yeah, like yeah, let's do that. Sometimes. Let's do that. We're have to do that. Um, especially, guys, looking forward to y'all. A lot of I haven't really talked about on our show, but WBGR is moving up in March. We're right. going to have a live audience. Yeah, they, come yo, y'all got to see the studio, son. They somebody hit the lottery or something. They got <laughs> they got a grant up in the joint. Somebody wrote a grant. They got some nice. Yo, they went to IKEA. They bought everything, shawty. <laughs> They so, bought the old store, shine yep. new cameras and everything, shine. They somebody hit the number big time up in this. You all come out to YGT and you was one of twenty five people in the audience. I'm gonna be giving away cars like Oprah and everything. Oh, man. You, you get a car. You get a bus pass. You get a gas card. 
You get an Uber coupon. You get a block gonna, of cheese. Yeah, a block of cheese. So, <laughs> so wow. all right, guys. So, Howard, I so much appreciate you. Tasha, coming to the thanks studio. for having me. Appreciate I hope you it. had a good time. I did. I really did. I really all did. Right, all and you right. got your little high top face. You sure you want the military? Look, got your little army, hey, two, army hey. cast on. Let me give y'all a little bit of secret. Next week is going to be all different because, like I said, oh, next man. Monday, guys, is YGT's birthday. I have four um, people, my fans, wanted to be be able to be in the studio. I selected Jacqueline Jackson, name was pulled out the hat. Tanya mm-hmm. Pritchett, name was pulled out the hat. Patrick Montag, name was pulled out the hat. And Lisa Gresson, name was pulled out the hat. But when you come in here next week, all this is going to be all different. Really? Because they met, we had a guy on. We should have talked about Could have had you here. He does man beards. He could have gave you a beard right here. He does beard mm-hmm. units. Oh, like a uh, uh, like a uh, lace front. Yeah, they got lace front beards now. Yes, they do. And you gotta see. You gotta watch the show. I'm gonna see you the show. Man. But he's gonna be hooking up your girl Tasha. So look forward to next Monday and see how my hair is and see what me and the um, the crew is doing. And I'll have well renowned chef um, Chef Terrence is going to be in the house, guys. So are you man, having all this stuff next Monday? The week that I'm not here. I'm gone. I'm gone. All this stuff popping. When I was here, you ain't got nothing. Yeah. Next Monday, 5.30, oh, Chef right. Terrence, some wine, YGT birthday. Wine. It's going to be off the hook. All right. I think we See got a scheduling later. problem. All right, y'all. Peace. <laughs> Bye-bye. Kiss my papa. Just kiss it. <laughs>